Welcome to the first lecture on Information Security Risk Assessment Toolkit. This is the first chapter of the book by Syngris. Mark Ra N M Talib Talibus and Jason Martin are the authors. And this is about the best book I could find that follows the substance of the course. It's understandable. It's very practical. It doesn't follow the course material exactly, but it follows it good enough. So this first chapter goes over what the definition of risk, what an information security risk assessment consists of, and some of the drivers like the laws and regulations behind information security risk assessments. What is risk? It's an ambiguous concept. It means different things to different people, very hard to define. You know, while I try to present a consistent definition of the terms used in a risk analysis in this class, you can't help but modify these a bit based on circumstances. Different authors, different organizations, different methodologies have slightly different definitions. Different disciplines involve different types of risk. You talk about risk to somebody involved, say, in insurance. It's a very different thing than what risk is to an information security person. Information security risk, for example, is not the same as market risk. Risk in general, though, is the measurement of uncertainty, and a risk assessment is a method for this measurement. What are the risk components? The main risk components are described on pages four and five of the text. It's an event, which is a possible occurrence, but not certain. An event is always a future event in the context of a risk assessment. It can be an action or an inaction. It's something that happens or doesn't happen. An event can occur by omission. An asset is the target of an event. Um, an event, an asset is typically something valued in your organization. Now, you know, if you looked at the other set of slides, I give a definition of an asset as something of value, and we're going to kind of stick to that as well. It's not just the target of an event, but that target has to have some value. Otherwise, why bother studying it? The outcome is the impact of the event, what you might call the exposure. And in the probability is the likelihood of the future event occurring. You know, what's the probability that hackers might be able to gain unauthorized access, etc. Here are some examples of risk. A risk is malware that encrypts a hard drive where a ransom is required to get the decryption key. This is a very common one right now. It's malicious software that infects a retail point of sale device and transmits customer credit cards to an organized crime group. It's a stolen laptop that has sensitive corporate information or it's a modification of an accounting system to prevent permit <clears throat> fraudulent transactions to go unnoticed. These are all concrete and real examples of information security risks. They all involve events, they involve assets, they involve outcomes, and there's some probability that any of these occur. You know, the probability of a stolen laptop, from my experience, is, is almost a certain thing. It's not a matter of when it happens, it's a matter of how often it happens, for example. What is an information security risk assessment? It's the process of identifying and assessing risk to confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information systems and resources. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability is the CIA triad that you we discussed in the uh, earlier introduction to security class. Those are the three main elements of information security and the three main elements that derive value and require protection in information. Why assess security risk? So that way you know the dangers to which you are exposed. You have real dangers instead of imaginary dangers. You have dangers that you should be concerned about as opposed to dangers you don't know you should be concerned about. Knowing the danger in turn helps you anticipate future events. You can prepare for them. If you know, for example, there is a possibility of somebody having some malware on their system that encrypts the entire hard drive and all their shares and holds some ransom, then you can do things to prepare for that, you know, like having an incident response procedure that deals with that, like making sure that you've got backups of shares and hard drives and making sure you have good user education to uh, recognize when this occurs and respond properly. It allows you to know how to fund and prioritize security controls based on what can happen and its potential impact. Overall, 
assessing information security risk allows you to plan for security. You know what's likely to happen. You know what's going to have a major impact on your organization. You know what that impact is. You know how that event is going to occur so you can plan for it. You know where to spend your money and you know how to spend it most effectively. Risk assessments and a security program. Risk assessments are part of an overall security program that organizations should have. It's not just something you do as a one-off. It's something that's part of an overall initiative to better secure data in your organization. Risk assessments determine which controls are required and help the organization budget and plan to implement these controls. If you determine that there are risks involved, say, in malware on user desktops, this means that you need to take implement the appropriate controls, which can include antivirus, can also include intrusion detection systems, can also include reactive controls, like being able to alert, monitor, and respond to the uh, presence of malware on machines and so on. It allows you to comply with regulatory requirements that require certain controls and may require formal risk assessment. You may have to do a risk assessment because you're regulated by a government entity or because you've got a, a very large business partner that expects you to do this. You know, if you are a merchant handling credit cards, the card brands expect you to be PCI certified, expect you to meet certain requirements. It's not a government requirement, but if you can't manage your MasterCard, Visa, and American Express, you're really limiting your ability to do business. It allows you to manage and plan security like any other business function. You can prevent crisis reaction and use planning instead. Instead of security being something nobody thinks about until your system is attacked, it's in the paper, it becomes something that you can manage, plan around, and proactively work to eliminate the risks or reduce the risk to an acceptable level. And then you can uh, lastly a risk assessment allows you to demonstrate as a security professional that your security program is founded in organizational reality. You've actually performed a risk assessment. You've done this risk assessment based on the best business value of the asset at risk. You've looked at realistic probabilities and likelihoods. You've gone through scenarios that have solid empirical backing for threats and vulnerabilities and exposures. And you've come up with a program and you can demonstrate to management that this program is rooted in what our organization considers valuable and how we prioritize things. Now this is the risk assessment activities in a nutshell. Identify threats, meaning the agents or entity or things that will try to uh, damage your information, compromise it, attack the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of your information resources and IT resources, identify vulnerabilities, weaknesses you have that would allow a threat to realize its goal to your detriment, identify your assets, what are the critical and important things that your organization has to protect and what are they worth, how, does they, how do they demonstrate value to your organization, and then determine the impact if the threat can take advantage of a vulnerability. And the likelihood, and likelihood is, is something that's it's very difficult to do and it's subject to a lot of argumentation. So I'm not, you know, I think likelihood needs to be taken with a certain grain of salt, with a certain amount of uh, judgment here. And then identify the controls that can minimize the impact, minimize the likelihood, and that can help the security function actually protect the value that the organization gets from its information assets. And you can demonstrate to management that you're doing this in a rational manner that takes into account the goals of the organization itself. Now there are a number of laws and regulations that uh, govern or that you may need to take into account and these four are the ones mentioned in the textbook. FISMA, the first one here, is the Federal Information Security Management Act of 2002. If you're a federal agency, FISMA is extremely important to you. It requires agencies to develop, document, and implement an information security program to protect information. It's a requirement for all federal agencies, and the Office of Management and Budget provides oversight for this. The concepts are very sound. They highlight the need for a risk-based policy for an agent to have a foundational level of security. 
OMB points to the National Institute of Standards and Technologies for specific standards regarding risk assessments. We'll be using one of these NIST standards in the project for the class. Even if you're not a federal agency, it is a, a very clear, very well thought out methodology for determining risks. So FISMA, while it applies to U.S. federal agencies, has collaterally, you know, as a side effect, uh, introduced some methodologies and concepts that are valuable to folks who aren't uh, federal government entities. Gramm-Leach-Bliley Act, GLBA, affects financial institutions. It defines financial institutions as folks that provide financial products or services like loans, etc., and so on. Specific sections require that organizations establish standards and safeguards around physical, technical, and administrative security. Security practitioners need to maintain GLBA clients in order to are required to assess the risks of reasonably foreseeable threats and in particular those that could result in the disclosure, misuse, alteration, and so forth of information. Regulatory bodies that uh, are involved in GLBA include organizations that cover banks, that cover credit unions, the Consumer Financial Protection Union, and the Mergers and Acquisitions International Clearinghouse. The specific focus on the IT examination handbook published by the FFIEC is quite useful when looking at GLBA and general financial institutions. The FFIEC examination handbook is something that anyone who audits or implements security in a, a financial institution should be very familiar with. It's available on the internet from the federal government and it is full of very, very useful detailed information concerning what some recommended security practices are and recommended management structures. HIPAA is the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. It covers health care providers and any other organization that handles uh, personally protected health care information. The Department of Health and Human Services provides oversight over HIPAA, and there's a number of guidance documents that cover securing this particular information. ISO 27001. It's not really a law or regulation, but it's a commonly accepted framework for implementing the management of security, and it includes risk assessment as part of its framework. In fact, ISO 27000, the whole series, which includes 27001, 27002, and other standards, is based on a risk assessment. You first are required to conduct a risk assessment and then demonstrate that the controls you're using are consistent with that. And that's it for today's class.